on trapping and hunting? Yeah. Well, I don't have very strong uh, feelings about it because I'm neither a trapper or a hunter. But I think at times, uh, I think hunting is our, I don't have any negative feelings about hunting. I don't believe in telling animals to wear them. And they don't use the traps with the, those awful teeth. And as far as hunting's concerned, I mean, uh, our, my family's policy was if you killed something, you ate it. So we weren't out there just maliciously killing things. I don't really know much about this, to tell you the truth. But um, I think it's a lot of fuss. Everything usually has two points of view, two sides to it. Uh, most things, uh, the answer to most questions is somewhere in the middle. To some, trapping and the use of fur is a controversial issue. Often, the debate is accompanied by misinformation and misunderstanding on both sides. This video takes a closer look at trapping and what it means to wildlife and to people. Trapping is managed and regulated by wildlife agencies in each state. These agencies are staffed by professionals, trained in and dedicated to the conservation of wildlife. A lot of people I talk to wonder how I can care so much about wildlife and yet endorse hunting and trapping. And over the years I've found that there are three common misconceptions among people who, d who don't really understand our support for those activities. Uh, one is that they believe that trapping causes species to become endangered. Uh, the second is that people can just go out and hunt or trap and, and do what they please without any restrictions on them. The third is that trapping only benefits those people who participate in it. But I think trapping is, is a legitimate way to harvest uh, animals that uh, may be in excess of. I think that it is harmful to our ecosystems. I think that um, those animals um, are preying on other animals. Animals are preying on them and, and that we should leave those ecosystems in place. Many people have the misconception that uh, hunting and trapping cause animal populations to decline. Um, that's simply not true. Since the advent of modern wildlife management, a lot of the species that we have in Illinois that are hunted and trapped are more abundant today than they were 50 or 100 years ago. The Wildlife Society is an international organization of professional scientists, managers, and educators, people who work for the health and welfare of wildlife populations every day. The Wildlife Society endorses trapping as an effective and humane management tool for wildlife conservation. Tom Decker is a certified wildlife biologist with the Wildlife Society and former division director for the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department. Well, agencies care a lot about the welfare of wildlife that we're responsible for managing. Uh, trapping is heavily regulated. We regulate things like season length, season timing, bag limits, those type of things to make sure that they're in sync with the seasonal calendar of the animals. So for example, we don't generally allow hunting and trapping seasons when the animals have young or small offspring. The agencies spend a great deal of money and time annually to improve these tools and techniques to ensure that they're being done appropriately. State and federal wildlife management agencies are currently participating in a national study to find the best traps and design education programs that teach the best ways to use them. This study will result in a list of best management practices, or BMPs, that trappers can use to become even better stewards of these sustainable wildlife resources. As a wildlife biologist, I would not worry about trapping as an activity that would cause populations to become endangered, because they are a heavily regulated activity today. We regulate the size of traps, uh, the types of traps that can be used, and sometimes even locations of the traps, uh, that the traps of, of the antique traps that a lot of people think of, the tooth traps, are actually something that are no longer allowed. In addition to regulating the activities of trappers, wildlife agencies monitor and study wildlife so that management decisions are based on scientific information. This information is gathered from trappers and from surveys and other research conducted by the agencies. I have leather shoes on. I mean, I'm not to the extent of limiting my uh, my own consumption in terms of necessities as far as that goes like you have to work so I can't wear plastic shoes to work they would probably you know not go for that but if you kill to eat if you eat meat I think it's the same thing isn't it then you have some people who go the other way and go oh no all animals you know don't wear leather don't eat eggs don't drink milk well there's a reason why we're able to do it you know, I mean, I think that's the natural order of things, too. People have a lot of misconceptions that only the fur of fur bearers are used, where actually a lot of the animals are used as a food, uh, particularly beaver, raccoon, and muskrat will be used 
for their, to feed their families or to feed their pets, and other parts of the animal are used also. Many of the animals caught by trappers are sold to fur buyers who prepare the fur for resale, market other useful parts of the animals, and send the rest to an animal byproducts facility. These byproducts provide a sustainable source of food, fiber, oil, and cosmetics, and are used in everything from soaps and car tires to pet foods, lubricants, and preservatives, such as mink oil. I think that it is appropriate to have some licensing and some controlled, some regulation over people and an effort to control the population of the what we call the wildlife because in fact they can themselves, even if left to their own devices, can cause problems among themselves. Beaver can actually be a wildlife biologist's greatest challenge. Beaver flowages are incredible wildlife habitat and so they are areas where so many different types of animals benefit but they can also be areas that can cause some great amounts of damage. Trapping is a necessary tool that helps balance the needs between people and wildlife. In situations where problems do occur, trapping is an option that can be used to alleviate the situation. Trapping doesn't control populations all of the time or prevent all types of damage, but trapping can be an important tool in managing wildlife in a responsible way for the benefit of people and wildlife. If it's uh, for the purpose of saving the species from being extinct, most certainly. Trapping not only plays a key role in maintaining healthy wildlife populations, but can be critical to restoring wildlife and in protecting endangered species. Hey, buddy. You're going out soon enough. <laughs> the restoration of river otters in many states is a perfect example. These otters were trapped in Louisiana, where they were abundant, and relocated to Illinois. This project was funded, in part, by fees paid by hunters and trappers. The otters being released here were captured with the same foothold traps used by trappers. Trapping also is used to reduce predators that prey on endangered species, such as the least tern and the piping plover. Oh, I hope that the benefit is uh, is worth it. You know, I'm, I'm assuming it's worth it. Uh, and but I think the education part is important too, for your department to educate the public, educate people like me who don't know much about it, so that we understand the connection between the trapping and this jacket. Managing our nation's wildlife is an important and complex task. The wildlife agencies charged with this responsibility respect all points of view. These agencies support trapping because it provides sanctioned, scientific solutions that are critical to proper management for the benefit of both wildlife and people. People do have misconceptions about these programs and, and trapping and it is responsible and important for us to go out and, and help people understand. Regulated trapping does provide a variety of benefits to wildlife and to people, but this public understanding is important because with that understanding we can secure a place for wildlife to thrive and have healthy populations and these benefits for future generations and that's really our goal.